Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I first got a fancy new cell phone, much later than many of my friends because I was deeply attached to my old flip phone, my favorite part of the phone, unsurprisingly, was that I finally had the ability to access any music at any point and I could turn it into my alarm clock tone. I listened to quite a bit of music, but the one song that I have more arrangements of than any other song on my phone is the hymn, How Firm a Foundation. This recording by Chris Springer has been my go-to alarm clock for many years. There's an interesting history behind this hymn. Before the Civil War, How Firm a Foundation was sung frequently in both the North and the South. It was a favorite hymn of Theodore Roosevelt and Andrew Jackson requested it to be sung at his deathbed. But to me, the thought of countless soldiers on both sides, singing the lyrics and clinging to the promises of God's word makes this hymn so relevant. On Christmas Eve of 1898, it was sung by an entire army corps of the United States in camp near Havana, Cuba. This story was shared by a Lieutenant Colonel in 1901. On Christmas Eve of 1898, I sat before my tent in the balmy tropical night, chatting with a fellow officer of Christmas and home. Suddenly from the camp of the 49th Iowa rang a sentinel's call. Number 10, 12 o'clock and all's well. It was Christmas morning. Scarcely had the cry of the sentinel died away when from the bandsmen's tents of that same regiment, there rose the music of an old familiar hymn. And one clear baritone voice led the chorus that quickly ran along those moonlit fields. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord. Another voice joined in and another and another. And in a moment, the whole regiment was singing and then the 6th Missouri joined in with the 4th Virginia and all the rest, till there on the long ridges above the great city when Spanish tyranny once went forth to enslave the new world, a whole American army corps was singing, Fear not, I am with thee, O be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee aid. The northern soldier knew the hymn as one he had learned beside his mother's knee, to the southern soldier, it was that and something more. It was the favorite hymn of General Robert E. Lee and was sung at the commander's funeral. Protestant and Catholic, North and South, were singing together on Christmas Day in the morning. That is an American army. The words to this hymn address all periods in our lives. The first verse is a statement of the solid ground whereon when we place our feet squarely on the word, then asking, what more can he say than to you he hath said? Everything we need to know has been told to us to live the lives we've been given. The next three verses are written in first person in the voice of God. The second verse addresses fear. I liken this to the anxiety we feel when first sitting out as a young person and then sometimes later when we doubt our abilities. I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand, upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. The third verse, when through fiery trials your pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be your supply. The flame shall not hurt you. I only design your dross to consume and your gold to refine. We're alerted to the fact that we will be tested and sometimes put through the fire, but we shouldn't fear the test. It's designed to burn away impurities, the dross. Then what remains is the gold that is of the most value to God, the refiner. The final verse, my favorite, throughout all their lifetime, my people shall prove my sovereign, eternal, unchangeable love. And then when gray hairs shall their temple adorn, like lambs, they shall still in my bosom be born. At every point in our lives, God's promises are with us enveloping us and shaping us into the faces we become. Gray hair at the temples, sometimes with hands trembling or memories fading, but still young, like a lamb held closely to Christ, guarding every hair on our heads.